Nasi as I see in the image of yourself you made me. Hello, this is Erica and welcome to another of our Demo Plus Techniques video. This one is all about an art journal page that I created with a stencil from the Crafters Workshop. Um, it's a six by nine stencil with a religious verse on it. So this is the journal page that I created for Demo Day. And today I'm going to show you a slightly different version because I use my journal as an inspirational starter and then create a piece of work with it. So I've liked some of the techniques that has worked out on this page and so I'm going to transform it onto an A4 piece of card that could then be put into a picture frame and then used as a piece of artwork on the wall. To start with I need to paint the piece of card. I've chosen um, craft card but it really could be anything because it's going to be covered up. I'm just going to choose a wide brush then I'm going to start with mermaid it's a, a light colour really and not trying to use too much not bothering about palettes too much I'm just going to slap on the paint and again um, if you've watched the videos before not worrying too much about covering the page in its entirety because it will add interest later because we're going to build layers onto this. If you see the video that I did inspired by the techniques I learnt at the Seth Apter workshop, um, this is why I've got the spare piece of card and we're going to do that printing technique again, transferring the paint onto the page. That is our first layer. If you can see on this page I had a darker edge. I really like that darker edge and I think it will really work well on a larger scale. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a slightly darker colour and concentrate on the edges. Obviously if I'd have used a black piece of card I could have done that from the start. Oh, taking off the dried pieces. So I'm just going to put some blobs around the edges. Um, for this I'm using Purple Rain which is a dark purple. So I'm going to go around the edges. I'm doing this now because it's just that with my layers it will just remind me to have a darker edge so it will it, it you know it's it's more of a a reminder than it's actually going to look like this don't worry about it being um too blocky that will all be blended in afterwards I've got way more layers to go than this Okay, We're, we've got our first couple of layers down. You can see there's still gaps and that, that's fine. Um, the next thing I want to do is just to let that dry for a few minutes because it's just easier to build layers when the paint underneath is dry. I know some people don't, don't wait but I, I do like... I do like to wait because then I've got proper layers, if that makes any sense. Right, so I should be back in a minute when it's all dry. Now that's practically dry, I'm going to use a glass blue, which is, is a translucent. Um, just give it a little shake, because some of the colours can separate a little bit. And I'm going to use the printing technique, so I've got my spare piece of card by the side 
and I'm just going to put a blob oops, of that colour onto the paper. Then with a brush, paint it out. So you can see the translucence, they do have a thinner quality to them. But that's great for layer building. And then, put that somewhere neat. Um, I'm going to add the colour to my page. And you can see the print, the brush stroke marks come out as well. So it does give a really nice finish. And then it's just a case of building layers from that. So we'll go with Captain Peacock. When I'm doing this technique, I don't tend to worry too much about drying the layers because you're only putting a very fine layer on there. It's only in places it's actually wet. So I won't worry too much unless it gets really, really wet and then I will take a heat gun to it. So we'll just do it in one, one direction to give it a nice finish. And there we go. You can see starting to um, overlap that border there's quite a lot of paint on here so I've got plenty to use whoops I'm knocking everything flying now right so I think I'll use that purple now because it will start to blend it all in Too worried about cleaning my brush because these colours are all very similar. If I was now to use orange I would definitely want to clean my brush because it's very opposite to the blues and purples that I'm using but as I'm using all the same colour family um, it doesn't matter too much. So carry okay. and now you can see that's all starting to blend and I'm not having any problem with that purple on the edge but it will give a nice frame to the work once it's done it's just a case of got any spare bits transferring it onto the piece now I can afford to go lighter now so I'm going to use Dolly Mix I might want a different brush for this just because I don't want it to go too dark because there's so much dark colour on that brush now. And then I'll move between the two as I add more layers. I mean, you can add as many layers or as few layers as you want, but I do think um, the more layers you add, the more complexity to the design there is, and it really does make you see I'm not pressing it all down completely but it does add a little bit more detail and interest to your work when you add more layers I know people think I'm crazy with my uh, with my layering but um, I really do think it makes a difference right so did I uh, did I show you all of those? That's what we've used so far. Mermaid, Purple Rain, Dolly Mix, Glass Blue, Captain Peacock, and then our final one is Bougainvillea. Not much in this bottle. It's a well used ooh, well used colour. Ooh, and a bit runny. And that was the Dolly Mix one, so I think you can get away with that one on there. So, just painting it out onto this transfer sheet, I should call it really, because that's what we're doing. I'd say, you know, you could use a gel gel um, plate, but really what, what we're doing is, is a bit more um, basic than that. Um, 
because you only want to pick up bits of it you see how you get that lovely look you've got a really nice finish to it we can afford to be quite dark on this piece of work because the things that we want to put on top are light so um, it kind of is better that the background is darker I'm going to add some more of that purple oh a big bubble in it um, I'm going to add some more purple because I just wanted to try a little bit more to, to tone that in but there is going to be quite a lot of um, other bits and bobs on top of it anyway so I don't think it will cause me too much of a problem and I'm going to add it to the edges but literally you could just be ad infinitum with this um, I do tend to put a lot on and then a little bit of dolly mix just around the edges just because I can but like I said you know there's no sort of like stop point with this you can sort of just keep going it's I suppose when you when you've had enough more than anything don't forget this is only our background I just want to put it just in small places and not all over and obviously you can see our um, our page is getting very wet so this is a point where I would stop dry it and maybe add some of the colors that maybe are not coming through so much now so we're we're lacking a bit of blue and a bit of um, the Captain Peacock green so I'm gonna dry it and then we'll uh, we'll add another layer okay so um, I think we'll go with that Captain Peacock and I want to try and get some more color into the border Oh, this is where I could have cleaned a brush because purple and turquoise is a little bit too a little bit too much different so still paint up at stage you might want to refresh your uh, transfer sheet because it's starts to get a bit messy so but we only want to put this in places we don't want to put it everywhere but we do need to reintroduce that color ah, there we go hopefully you can see that that it makes a difference to add some of those colors you see this paper's getting very uh, touchy now it doesn't really want to be adding too much more to it last color I promise this one is the last one and then we'll get on use that one because it's I think I'll put them both in water then because that's it that that's it now that means I can't do any more if I've put them in water that's always the best way isn't it and if you can see that little bit of blue is just helping that now to lift the colour right so we've got a nice darkish background but if I can show you the original if you can see you need the darkness to, to make the, the light pop out so it's, it's not a bad thing okay so I'm just gonna dry that and then we're gonna get the grunge paste out and start to use the stencil
right so here we are it's all dry and ready to go it's quite textural already and we're going to add more texture to it so I'm using the paper artsy grunge paste and I'm using this stencil like I said it's the crafters workshop um, inspired journaling a six by nine stencil um, with a Bible quote used for Bible journaling um, faith journaling uh, those are the names that they use for the, for the techniques um, there's some ideas on the back here as well you can see this is actually into a bible you can buy special bibles that have um, a space down the side for your own notes or for your own journaling and images and um, it's very popular in America um, but it just gives you a chance to add your own self to your work to your bible we're using it today on this piece of card so i'm gonna start with my centerpiece because my centerpiece will be the words and then i'll use the feathers around the edge i want to put my words down first to give me an idea of where the feathers need to go because if I went in crazy with all the feathers I might run out of space and not get the the words in properly I'm doing this by eye but you can always do like a kind of measure stick so if I take it from there to there that's obviously way way too far one side it's hard to judge because of that feather it kind of puts it out so taking my measuring stick it's about there and so from that side it's about there and just sort of by eye just kind of measuring that up. that's about right now because it looks way over there and you'd expect it to be further further that way so it's always a good idea to have some kind of measuring process so my grunge paste is at the end of its pot but there'll be a, there'll be enough there for me to finish this off and I'm just taking a gloop of it and just running it down the page and filling all in filling all, all the words in don't worry too much about that it, there's quite a gap if you were worried you could always put a bit of masking tape in there um, just to prevent you either going over that edge or into the feather but I've got quite a nice space there so I think I'll be fine the nice thing about the grunge paste is once you've got it down it tends to suck onto the card so I, I've never found the necessary to um, tape it down pretty good and actually on this the way I'm doing it today it's actually quite nice if you get a little bit of excess under the stencil because the colouring technique we're using it's quite nice to have a white edge on it so even if you're not good at doing this you should be fine with this doing this technique so I'm gonna lift it off Got a lovely impression of the stencil there. Um, I'm just going to take some time to clean it off because we're going to need it obviously with the feather and obviously we, we need to dry it. Right, we're now ready to have a few of the feathers. Um, I'm not going to plonk them on I'm going to put them as I did on the journal and have them going in at angles and just look like a background so I'll just place it down and then just scrape it through oops need a little bit more only problem is you need three hands so 
that's our first one and we'll have one coming in here it's kind of good to work on two sides you do not want to put a stencil on top of a wet piece I've done it um, you always forget so it's always worth just working on opposite sides and then if any doubt dry them before you move on because there's nothing worse than getting it really perfect and then smudging it so there we go there's another one oh got it everywhere well oh, that's nothing new um, I could just about get away with doing one here before I start smudging things so I shall put one here oh there we go see <laughs> but holding that bit up here's where um, three hands oh let me let me get the paste first there we go that's how not to do it so we'll have one here not too close to the text but lifting that side up so I don't smudge that see this is where I say if any doubt it's easier just to dry them each time rather than try and do this kind of balance balancing act that I'm doing today and whoop, lift it up scrape that off all these excess bits will will go back in so nothing's wasted so I think one there one there let's work out um, I know dry first because this is where the disaster comes in As long as they're touch dry it's enough I like um, heat gunning the grunge paste because it kind of puffs a little bit as well but you get a more rounded finish obviously if you didn't like that you would have to wait for it to dry but I do like that kind of puffiness um, lastly I think I'm gonna because I've got two tips there I'm gonna put the base on that one Oop, slopping it everywhere um, don't want it too high up I mean this is a very random thing you know it just whatever you feel like but I kind of think about balance when I'm doing these compositions so if you do something one side it's kind of nice to have it on the other I'm just going to turn it upside down for a minute just so that I can put one in here I think about there would be nice kind of going across the top scrape some of that off there use that if you look after your pot of grunge paste you can use it right to the end I have wasted some in the past simply by not looking after it not putting the lid back straight away um, what I like to do is put a little spritz of water in the pot once I've um, finished and it just keeps it moist it seems to work for me although it might not be the right thing to do it seems to work so there we go we've got them coming around I could be tempted to put a little one there like I said the, you watch the balance of it and you just have a feeling for it and a little one there being careful though like I said just at the end go and smudge it it's 
it's only a little one but it's just something right now I'm happy so I've just got to let that to dry I've got to clean my stencil because now we're now going to put them back down and use it with inks so I shall be back with you in a minute right um, we're all back it's all dry and ready to go. What I love about grunge paste is just how quickly it does dry. It, it really can, um, especially when you use it thin like this, it can dry very quickly indeed. So I'm going to use my Distress Mini inks to colour this in. Now obviously if I was just to colour it in, it would be really messy. So what I do is I take the stencil and I put it back in place and it's not too tricky because it's raised up it, it kind of falls into the place so we'll just get it in the right spot over a shifty there am I in the right spot I think we are we are missing the top of the T oh, yeah, still he is there sort of Okay, so we're ready to go and I'm going to just use a sort of rainbow kind of um, gradient of colour. If I was being proper rainbow, I suppose I should start with the red colour. So what I do is I keep my little sponge daubers on the back so they're ready to go. It's great if you're one-handed as well at the, mo like to the moment. And just add your colour onto the grunge paste really this is a lovely quick easy way to add colour so it's not quite red I've used uh, abandoned coral but I do like that colour so we'll put the sponge back and we go orange next. Again, oh, my daubers are not picking up. Right, orange next. Ooh, nice and rich colour that one. I suppose it depends how we, much I've used the colour. So that's my orange. Next, yellow. So yellow next and looking very nice and green oops I've got to get the back out there we go so green next and you can see I'm sort of blending them a little bit. I won't damage or mix too much colour because the grunge paste sort of sucks the colour in anyway. So not too much problem of it going mucky. Um, I think I'm going to use Salty Ocean for the blue. Oh, I'm just aware that I probably didn't tell you the names, did I? Abandoned Coral, Spiced Marmalade mustard seed mowed lawn and this one's salty ocean right so there's a blue there going into a little bit of the green get some color you can tell i've used my blue a lot it's a lot less juicy um i need a purple that one i'm just going to go and get because I don't have a mini of it. I must get a mini of that one. So we've got Distress Ink Wilted Violet. I must get a mini of that one because then I'll have my full rainbow. And that one should be quite juicy because it's quite a new one. And we'll just add that. There we go. So 
so that's our purple so when we lift it up we've got a lovely rainbow effect on our on our lettering um now i want to add some color to the feathers so if i just give that a quick wipe just take the excess off i'll give it a proper wash afterwards i know some people don't take great care over stamps and stencils i personally believe if you've invested money into something like this you want to look after it to the best of its ability because i don't know if you can see but it is kind of gunking up now and that will only get worse over time so each time you misuse it you won't get the quality of detail that you did the first time round. so personally i just think if you're going to spend money on something you know you need to look after it so we'll start with our feathers now and this is just like a using a just a mix of colors um, any of the colors that you've got thinking though carefully when blending what you put next to each other so like if you think about the rainbow the ones that are next to each other on the rainbow will blend well if you're going from red like to the green not so good so it gives you something to think about when you're now I think I might do a green feather might have enough on there yes it did so we've got that one there and what I like see and um, because I said um, the it doesn't matter if you're not too precise with the grunge paste is because if you can see that white edge it really gives it a lovely finish so I don't mind that white so I'm going to put a little bit on here and for this one let's go purple Ooh, very juicy. purple into red I'm getting in a bit of a mess here so that one's really vibrant Ooh. just about got away with it because that isn't isn't very orangey red but we managed it Okay, so this one here, where shall we go? Um, we'll start with the blue. The reason I'm saying that is because that green might pick up. Oh, let's do a turquoise. Literally, I believe you can throw any colour at this piece. You know, this is the thing, you know, they'll, they'll say, oh, you only ever use three colours on a piece of work. You can always cheat and just do your own thing. Don't worry about what, what sh it should be like. It's got to be what you want. And that was... It's peacock feathers. So there we go. <laughs> and we'll add it with a blue. That went a little bit murky because it picked up that red. There we are really love each time it looks different you're getting something I think I will give that a wipe because it does tend to pick up all that color you don't want them all to look a bit near a technical term there <laughs> um, let's line it up again right um, don't really want to use turquoise because I've got it on that side already so let's go something we haven't got we haven't got any purple on this side so really I mean although this is kind of random I am thinking what I'm doing a little bit when it comes to balance um, just to make it even out if that makes sense you know you you're always looking at it as a whole 
Um, so pink, uh, purple, I think we can afford to add that red. Although, oh no, let's go, let's just throw it out there, uh, picked raspberry. Oh, I didn't pick it up. Huh. Ironic name. Oh yes, look at that. And it's a new colour, so just add a little something to it. I'll blend it a little bit, but I don't want to pick up too much because I might just splurge it all on my on my uh, what they call it dabber. That's it. <laughs> Right, as you can see, it's starting to come together now. Um, I can afford to put some blue on this side. Oh, I've got to watch those little bits. So, let's pick a blue. Line it up nicely. Might be, no, it's not enough. Let's get it loaded up again. There it is. And I think I'll do blue to yellow. Yeah, let's do yellow. All the time I'm kind of comparing what colours I've used. I kind of like them to not be too samey. There we go, and then I've just got those last little bits, um, and I'll cheat, I think I'll just pick up the bottom, just, uh, just put something down. Obviously you can see it's not as easy to do it without the dauber, but I was trying to do it for quickness. And that one can be, yeah, yellow. Oh, I've got yellow on there. Handy. Very handy. And job done. There we go. Now, there's one more thing that I wanted to show you. Because I don't know if you noticed, but the because of the textural background, the words disappear a little bit. So, I want to add shadow to them all. So... Plus there was one other thing I wanted to do with the spatter brush and I wanted to add a little bit of a, a white. So if I just bring in my palette and I've got a chalk which isn't quite white, it's a kind of off white but it will add a little highlight if I can get any out. The thing is, I'm going to water it. I'm going to water it down with a distress sprayer anyway, just water. And then I'm using the distress spatter brush, picking up the paint. As you can see, in the tip only, and just I think you can see that just spattering. Just picking some up. Oh, don't want too much. Don't want a big spatter. Hopefully you can see that. It just lightens the background up and you can add a few speckles on top of the distress ink. So hopefully it's going to add a bit of lightness to it. I can already see that. Um, important when you're cleaning the distress brush is that you run it under water and run it downwards so all of that paint comes out. So I shall be back in a minute because I believe in cleaning these properly. So I run it under the tap that way down and clean it out. And I'll dry this and I shall be back. run the final stretch here now 
and I'm using a St Stabilo All pencil as you can see it's a, a water soluble pencil but it's also a little bit waxy um, you can see it's for paper glass plastic and metal um, the reason I'm using that is is it goes oh you can see it's already on my finger um, it goes pretty much on any surface so when it's all texturally and you know like this it will just go on better and I'm just going to go round in the shadow of all the text so I've, I've sharpened it really sharp because I've got some little words to go around so I'm assuming my light source is coming from here so I'm doing everything that's that would be in the shadow as you can see now I know you can't really see what I'm doing here but then with a fine brush when you water it it makes the the shadow even more intense and it really makes the the text stand out so um, I'm just going to get a paintbrush and show you that so I've just got a fine paintbrush and I'm just going to use some water and just I think you can see now how much that makes that stand out and what it's doing is it's making the text really stand out from the page and if you've made a mistake in any bit you can pick it up with a little bit of water just wipe it because it's standing out you shouldn't have any problem so I'm just going to continue with that and go all the way down the page I'm not going to worry about the feathers I'm just going to worry about the text So there we are I would in case I've lost any of my little letters you can always go in with a pen just to pick anything up that you might have lost and I think that is it so sorry it was a long one but I think sometimes those little faffy bits at the end are the bits that make it look special. So we've got the, the shadow that really lifts the text and it makes it stand out more. So thanks very much for joining us and here is the finished piece. Because the sunlight, it feels right And the moonlight in the